this was the in the US, key Democrat says bring breach on the US stock market. So terrific. Okay, welcome traders to this week's live trade analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. If you can hear me and you can see the Tickmill welcome screen, if you just type a Y in the chat box, so that I know we are uh, are good to go. Type a Y in the chat box if you can hear me and you can see the welcome screen so that I know we can uh, we can start here. Testing audio, one, two, three. Testing audio, one, two, three. If you can hear me and you can see the welcome screen, you can just type the great stuff, thanks. Okay, so before we jump into today's presentation, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Specifically for today, what's important is that the views expressed by me are solely mine, they're not indicative of or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. So for you, those of you here for the first time, just a brief introduction to who I am. Uh, after I graduated from King's College London, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup, which was focused on C-suite executive search, specifically for technology businesses. So essentially I had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the market, sometimes quite literally overnight. So I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started uh, day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately, day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out and as the market phase changed, I began to average down into losing positions basically giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure financial hit. To say that was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that mean? Well. It means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset, understanding the true nature of trading being simply a numbers game in which you're playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcomes of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next hundred trades because I know if I focus on excellence and execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering again annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels.
from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns in the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm resident market expert exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickmill. I provide a daily market outlook with a uh, breakdown of both the fundamental and technical drivers for the session ahead. Um, you can access that through the Tickmill blog and you can enter your email address to get updates on that, uh, to get automatic updates for those posts. In addition to that, I also run, um, I'm sorry, in addition to that, I also provide three to five uh, setups that I'm tracking in the market through the Tickmill TradingView account. You can subscribe to that through uh, TradingView and get automatic updates for the uh, for the trade alerts that um, that I'm tracking in the market, and most recently I've been responsible for running the Tickmill E-mini futures uh, trading group strategy group uh, through this this Facebook group, uh, where I provide the a daily trade plan um, directly into the into the feed. Here it's a short video, last about three to five minutes. What I do is I basically give the exact setups that I'm looking for in the uh, the mini &E S&P for the uh, the cash trading session in New York. Um, so it's a short video, but it basically gives you the levels that I'm looking to enter and exit the market uh, for any given day. And for those who want to take things to the next level, I now also run a Telegram channel uh, whereby I live stream the opening hour of the cash trading session in New York. And, uh, and it's essentially a screen share where I'm giving commentary on exactly what I'm seeing in the markets, exactly where I see the opportunities. And then I'm giving the specific trades that I'm taking and how, to man how I'm managing them and how I'm exiting them. Uh, just last month, we had 123 points of profit in there. And that equates to about 7.5% return for me. But since we set this group up in April, I've delivered over 1,400 points of profit. And on a very moderate risk profile, that would equate roughly to about 140% return on capital. Um, so I, what I'll do now is I'll just post a link into the chat here. It's uh, the, the Facebook group is, is free to join. You just have to request um, membership and uh, and. I'll, uh, I'll add you to that group to get the daily setup there. Uh, the Telegram channel, if you um, if you want, if you're interested in, in accessing that, uh, you can um, you can reach out to me through uh, LinkedIn. I'll post my profile in the chat as well. You can send me a direct message, and uh, I'll explain more about the Telegram channel. And for those who are interested in tracking the trade setups that I post. I'll just post that link, the trading view link in there for, uh, for that channel for you to follow along. So that gives you a, uh, a brief overview of my background and where I'm coming from. So let's now jump into the charts. And we are going to start with the S&P 500. I'm just going to quickly have a sip of water first. And also I just also, I'd like to mention, if you have any questions or there's a chart you want me to take a look at that I don't cover in my, uh, my deck here, then just, uh, just put it into the chat or the Q&A, and uh, I won't answer straight away, but I'll come back to that at the end, and I'll cover off any questions you guys might have. So, S&P 500, this is the E-mini futures contract, and we have seen a, a decent sell-off here. Whilst the S&P trades below uh, the 45.85 area now, I'm looking for a test of the trend line support here. We also have the median line of a pitchfork overlaid from uh, the prior cycle high using uh, the corrective low and then the new cycle high. And we've got monthly projected range support coming in at 44.60. So I'm gonna be watching the price action here, watching for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side and initially looking for a retest of the monthly pivot from below. So that's up to 46.21. And then we'll see how the price action develops, whether or not we're gonna get another leg to the downside in a more protracted corrective move, and then look for another bounce, or we are going to, uh, we're gonna put in a base here and ultimately uh, trade higher into the, the back end of the year, retest cycle highs, and then on to the, uh, the top side of the ascending trend channel here at 48.56. So there are going to be opportunities on the long side hit from the uh, from the trend line, 
or if we break the trend line on the closing basis, then there will be short opportunities looking for a move down back into this uh, 42.50 area. The NASDAQ also seeing some weakness. Potential here that the NASDAQ has completed a uh, three-way corrected move. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So we have the swing high, the swing low, and we have just, well, we're coming just shy. So we would have a three wave correction here in the quality objective, testing 50, uh, 15, 6, 9, 4, those prior highs. So I'd be watching for bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side. And again, looking for a retest of the monthly pivot from below as the initial target. Um, Jen, you have, uh, you have, do you have a question? It's saying you, you've raised your hand. If you want, if you can just type it into the, into the chat box or into the Q&A box and I'll come to it at, uh, at the end. So this is the, the next level I'm watching in terms of the NASDAQ. We had a great trade. In the NASDAQ, uh, after the last correction, we were watching for a uh, bullish reversal pattern from the trend line here. We've got this pin bar, and we played that all the way up into the top side of the channel. So let's see how price responds here at that 15,694 level. Now, again, we get more information on this test because if price fails to find support there, then what we're going to be thinking is uh, looking on the short side, so looking for a move that breaks this internal trend channel. First pullback into it, acts as resistance, and then we get the extension down into the, the major trend line. And if we fail there, then we'll be thinking about a move back into the 14,400 level. But for now, our focus is on this test here of the 15,694, and we'll see if buyers step back in. Dow Jones, just let this load. So similar story here in the Dow. What I'm looking for is a move to test trend line support here and these prior lows uh, that brings us in at 34,200 level. So I'm watching there for bullish reversal patterns, thinking initially of a, uh, a corrective move to retest the, the monthly pivot from below. The key area here on this chart for me is this, uh, this resistance area at 15,460-ish. If we fail there, then that's going to suggest we're in for a bigger corrective move, and we will be thinking about an extension down into monthly range support, 32,900 as the next uh, logical objective. But if we can get through there on a closing basis, then that's going to suggest that this correction is over and we're going to retest and take out prior cycle highs on route to a move up towards 37,000 uh, would be the minimum upside objective there. Next one, in terms of these equity indexes is the Russell 2000. I'm watching here uh, this trend line support. So if we can hold, get a bullish reversal, then we'll look for initially for a test of the uh, monthly pivot from below 2273. And then on to this prior resistance area up towards 2363. If we fail there, then we know that we're likely to have an equality objective to the downside, taking us into the monthly range support, uh, 1966. So we, this is going to be a key area because if we get through there on a closing basis, then we look to recapture prior cycle highs and take that out and trade up into projected ascending trend line resistance that now comes in at 25.67. Equally, if we get a close below, the, below this um, support area at 20.86, first pullback to retest this trend line from below will be an excellent opportunity to get in on the short side and, and trade down into monthly range support at uh, 19.68. So there is some um, you can see what I'm trying to explain. I guess what I'm trying to get across here is that there are multiple opportunities developing now in these equity indexes. And it's just about paying attention to these key areas and watching for the price response to get in on what I think are going to be some excellent trading opportunities. The DAX in Germany. So has tested some pivotal support here. I'm looking for a three wave correction. And again, a similar setup to these uh, other equity indexes. Let me just draw in the next key area. 
So we will be paying close attention to how price responds on any retest of this, um, where are we? 15,948 up to 15,998, because if we fail there, then in all likelihood, we're gonna move down to test the ascending trend line support and the monthly range support back down at 14, uh, 14,157 is gonna be the key area to, uh, to pay attention to. But equally, if we can get through here on a closing basis, then we know again, that in all likelihood, this correction is complete. We take out the prior highs and we can think about a move up into ascending trend line resistance towards 17,000. An instrument that not many people pay attention to, but certainly we want to uh, be cognizant of here is the VIX index. So this is volatility index. And obviously, as we've seen a pullback in the equities, we've seen a spike in the VIX. We're now trading into this uh, trend channel resistance. So we're going to get some e equally useful information here from the VIX, because if the VIX rolls over from this, from current levels and starts to track lower again, then that's going to in, give us in, tradable information with respect to these equity indexes that in all likelihood, the, uh, the current correction is complete. But if we take out this resistance area coming in around the uh, 33 level, then we could be in for a more protracted correction in the equity indexes. So it's always useful to keep an eye on the VIX because if we, if we see a change in the trend here, to the upside, then that gives us immediate information with respect to uh, the equity indexes and where we're likely heading. 10-year notes. So the 10-year uh, the notes in the US move inversely to bond yields. So as the 10-year is going up in price, bond yields are coming down. Um, and so what we are tracking here is if we go to the 10-year yield, so what I'm anticipating for the yields now is that we're in this potential ascending triangle pattern. And so I'm anticipating for us to continue rotating within this range of 1.68% uh, down to a low of probably 1.4 into the back end of this year. And then what I'm ultimately looking for at some point is that we see an explosive move to the upside and we head uh, above that 2% yield uh, level. And that's, uh, so that's, this is gonna be a key pattern to keep an eye on this, uh, this descending triangle because when we see that disruption in terms of uh, yields in the US rising, um, that's gonna have a, uh, a significant impact on equity markets as well. Dollar index. We are trading still pretty nicely within this pitchfork. And so I'm looking for any weakness in the dollar index now to find support at the prior highs at the 9450 area to set up the next leg uh, to the upside, look, thinking about a test up towards the 98 level, 61.8% uh, retracement of this prior decline. At this stage, I, I would only get bearish on the dollar um, if we take out this trend channel support and that's back towards the 9350 area at this stage. Gold. Gold has made a, a test here of this um, trend line. I, I posted this gold chart on an intraday basis for our time frame yesterday through the, uh, the TradingView account. So I'm looking for bullish reversal patterns here in gold. And if we can get a, a bullish reversal, potentially putting in a, a pin bar here uh, today. So if we can get a, a bullish reversal here in gold, then I'm looking for an extension up uh, through the prior highs at the 18. Uh, 1882 en route to an ideal 1923 in gold. Gold also has seasonal support at the moment. Uh, November, December and January tend to be very good months for gold. So we'll see how, uh, how that sets up. But certainly this is looking interesting now. If we can hold this trend line, get this bullish reversal in, then we're going to be looking for long positions and we've got some nice upside targets to play for. Crude oil. I uh, also posted this one today. I think we are in the first leg here of a five wave sequence in terms of crude. So I'm looking to fade any rallies um, above the 71 level. I'm looking for a five equals one objective down to 63. And then we've got structural support back towards 62. From there, I, I'd anticipate a relief rally, three wave move. And similar to these equity indexes in, to a certain degree, we get a retest of this trend line from beneath. Bearish reversal patterns here will set up an equality objective in crude back down towards $50 a barrel. But equally, if we can get back through 
uh, $77, then it could suggest that we're about to start the next leg to the upside. That, to my mind, at this stage is the less probable scenario. Um, at this point, what I'm thinking is because of the impulsive nature of this decline so far, that the next three wave correction and certainly back into this trend line from beneath will be an opportunity to look at bearish reversal patterns and get in on the short side in terms of crude oil. Uh, so that's a scenario I'm tracking there. Bitcoin. This one's interesting as well for a, uh, for a seasonal play. Uh, December has tended to be a pretty good month. The, the prior trades I've been looking at in Bitcoin were these trend line breaks that uh, after the correction, and we've got a similar situation setting up here. So any move in Bitcoin for me back through the 60,220 area is going to be an opportunity on the long side. First target on the upside is 75,000. And then we look for a test of the major uh, ascending trend channel resistance coming at 83,700 at this point. So watch for that close through the trend line, and then you've got a, a decent long shot there. Ether. We have taken out, well, we're, I'm looking for another close through this trend line to confirm uh, a bullish breakout here. I want to see the psych indicator kick up into the, the green zone, suggesting uh, further momentum strength. And then what I'm looking for then will be a test of the uh, 5,050. And then as this area acts as support, we then look for a move up into uh, 5,775 in terms of ether. So this one seems to be leading the pack at the moment. So we'll see if we can get this uh, next breach through these ties. And then you, again, just playing momentum. Uh, you want to, What I want to see is this uh, psych indicator flip green, and then that sets up this next leg to the upside in terms of, uh, in terms of ether. Dollar yen. Obviously, seeing a bit of weakness now with the uh, with risk sentiment uh, on the wane here. So, what I'm looking for with this uh, dollar yen is any pullbacks now into 14, uh, 114.38, 114.50 bearish reversal patterns, and I'm looking for a test then of the trend channel support um, coming in into these prior highs here. This setup plays out. So, 111.30s again, bullish reversal patterns. Uh, to engage on the long side, and then I'm looking for a move up to this 115.80 as uh, as the next upside objective in terms of dollar yen. Looney, this one's got uh, an interesting development here. We are looking for the Looney to take out this uh, trend line resistance on a closing basis, and then I think there's a momentum setup developing to take us up into the equality objective. So I'm talking about the equality objective. What do I mean? Uh, not that. One second, guys. So we are looking for equal legs versus this swing structure here. And the target then for the loony is 132.20s. And that will basically be correcting this entire decline that we saw um, last year. So if we can get this through on a closing basis, then you want to be looking for intraday pullbacks to, uh, to develop long positions, looking for that 132 euro. Obviously, the inverse to the uh, the dollar index. What I'm anticipating here is that we can see a correction uh, develop. Ideally, what we get is um, a scenario like this that takes us back into these prior uh, lows at the just above 115, and then from there, I think we get the next leg to the downside in terms of the euro to complete a much bigger cycle. We've got a weekly trend line coming in uh, just above 110, and then once we get there, I think we can see a more sustained corrective move in terms of the euro. Euro yen, this is what I'm watching today. I'm looking for a bullish reversal pattern here in the euro yen, so looking for a green candle to, uh, to form here. In, with the trend candles. And then I think we can get a retest of the trend line from below. So this will put us back up into the 130 area and then maybe we roll over again, but this will be a key test here in terms of the Euro Yen. So just watching this area now, uh, looking for that green candle close through the descending trend line resistance. And then I'm gonna be on uh, playing that from the long side. Euro Aussie. 
Couple of ideas here with the Euro Aussie. I'm looking for a test of this uh, broken trend line support as resistance, bearish reversal patterns on the short side, then look to play the break with the break point from where we took out this triangle to the upside. So I move back into 157.30s, watch for bullish reversal patterns then to get in on the long side, targeting the high volume nodes and the descending trend line resistance coming in at 162.70s in terms of the Euro Aussie. Sterling. Trying to uh, trying to recover here, but it's uh, it, the bounce so far is looking weak. So uh, the sterling view is going to probably have to uh, be amended here to look now for price to test. So we have an equality objective versus this. Let me draw the swing structure that I'm looking at. So we have our essentially A, B, and a C target now down at 130. Um, so what we're looking for here are basically rallies in sterling to, to ultimately fail now, certainly back into that 134 handle just below. And then that sets up, I think, the, the washout move down to the 130 and then maybe a more sustained correction can, can develop from there. Uh, hasn't been able to take out the trend line resistance. And so it's, uh, it's looking a little, uh, little shaky here for sterling. I really can't get bullish on it now until we get back through this pivot zone at 134. Uh, so looking at another leg to the downside potentially here for Sterling. Let's quickly look at these other majors, the Aussie. Yeah, I mean, the Aussie also uh, looking, looking weak here. So whilst we, whilst we hold the pivot here, I would be looking for a test of the 70 handle. Maybe we get a, a, a reasonable bounce attempt from there. But ultimately now, whilst we are trading below this pivot here at the 75.50, there is actually now an equality objective all the way down at 66 for the Aussie. So um, at this juncture, it, whilst we trade below this broken trend line support, this flag pattern, then any any rallies are going to be an opportunity to to get in on the short side and look for a test through the 70 we likely bounce from the, the pivot there might might get as high as back into that trend line from that point but uh, for me from that point it that uh, that just sets up an opportunity to to short the aussie and trade for the equality objective now down to the 66 60s um kiwi obviously also pretty weak it now, um, whilst we trade below its broken trend line, it has an equality objective down to the 65 level. So first stop will be the descending trend line uh, support. We likely see a bounce from there, but ultimately now I look for a test of the yearly pivot, 6630s, and then that's 6570 to complete the major corrective objective. And that when I'm talking about that is this swing structure here. equal legs and then from there we might see some uh, some significant bounce or even the start of a new uptrend in terms of the kiwi so you can see how that this is feeding into the, all all the majors essentially at the moment are uh, are in these are looking for these equal leg objectives to the downside um equity indexes are really going to be driving the action now so Paying close attention to all these equity indexes and the levels that I've highlighted for you here today is going to be critical to giving really decent trading information. And that's going to feed into uh, other risk assets in terms of uh, the dollar. And then those FX majors are, uh, are going to be key. So that's uh, those are the charts I'm looking at and what I'm focused on over the coming sessions. Uh, if anyone has any questions or a chart they'd like me to take a look at, I haven't covered. Uh, now is an opportunity to uh, you can post it into the, the chat or type it into the Q&A. Equally, if you don't have a question, um, you can type an N in the chat box. That's just as useful as it lets me know I've done a, a reasonably good job of explaining things here and we can, uh, we can wrap today's session up. Okay, I shall take the, uh, the silence as suggesting that there aren't any questions at this point and, um, and we're all on the same page. So I'm gonna wrap the session up here. I strongly suggest you take advantage of the 
Futures Facebook group. And, uh, and for those who are interested in taking it to the next level, uh, you can hit me up on LinkedIn and I can give you more information about the Telegram group. Uh, essentially, the only, uh, the only thing you have to do for the Telegram group is open the Futures account with Tickmill, and that gives you access to, uh, to those daily live streams with me trading live during the opening hour of the cash session. And, uh, and again, trading view that my trade ideas, I update them daily, three to five markets per day that I'm actively tracking. Okay, thanks very much for your time, everyone. And I hope you, uh, hope you found this useful. All the best and we will reconvene the same time next week.